Hi everyone, Lyric is here from ACAT Games. Since currently I'm working on rigging and character animation, I decided to record a video covering my process of rigging and maybe sharing some tips on it. Before we start, uh, what is actually rigging? For those who do not know, to put it simply, rigging is the creation and binding of a skeleton to your character, so that it can be used in the future to make your character do somersaults, climb walls, punch dudes and so on and so forth. For myself, I divide rigging into three stages. The creation of the skeleton, directly working with the joints. Skinning, linking our skeleton to a mesh, testing deformations and distributing weights. And finally, the creation of controllers. In this video, we'll probably go through all three stages. To be honest, I'm not quite sure, but uh, maybe. Will be a bit too quick, but uh, I'll try to cover all three stages as detailed as possible. And I'd like to point out the skeleton will be very, very simple. It's uh, suitable for animation, it works, it's just fine, but it doesn't cover such advanced things as muscle deformations, creases on the body, and stuff like that. Someday I'll talk about it, but not today. So the first stage, the creation of a skeleton. The process is fairly straightforward. Before you sit down and build joints, think about what movements you will need from your character. Literally, like, sit and think about what anatomy should look like and how it should move. Here I have a guy from our current project, Penguin Meltdown. The fact that he's without legs is actually normal, don't worry. How to start a skeleton is not important, but one thing is, all joints should eventually be attached to one common joint. This is so-called root joint. I will show you the structure when we finish our skeleton. In creating the skeleton in Maya, one of the most important things is the so-called local rotation axis of joints. What is it? Every joint that you make has uh, its own three axes of rotation, X, Y, Z. They are responsible for the angle at which certain joints uh, rotate. Let me show you to be more clear. If you already know this, that's, that's again, that's awesome, uh, you can skip this part. Here are three joints. Uh, imagine that uh, this is probably an arm or something like that. If we select them and turn on local axis, we can see it in the center of each this uh, sphere. Correct position of this local uh, axis ensures that our joint will rotate in an anatomically correct way. So parts like legs, arms, neck, spine, so on and so forth, everything depends on it. Thus, you have to remember a very simple rule. In one chain, the local axis must be directed in one uh, direction. That is, here we have a shoulder for arm and hand. For all three, the local axis should be the same. So it should be something like this. If you don't have it, let's say there is something like this, maybe, you'll get a complete mess. Maybe later I will actually cover this topic in more details, uh, although in general I think it should be more or less clear. Let's continue with our character. We are building a skeleton, nothing so outstanding. Plus, the character is very simple, both in terms of topology and anatomy. Another advice I'd like to point out, rename all your joints and keep the entire hierarchy in order. Because if you have, roughly speaking, a bunch, a bunch of joints with the names like 111, 1223 and so on and so forth, it will be a complete mess. So, here is our skeleton. The next stage will be skinning. We select our skeleton, then the mesh itself, skin, bind skin. I will not go through settings of bind skin in this video, I'll talk about it in the future. After I binded my skeleton, my automatically distributed the weights of my model. What does it mean? It means that Maya, uh, so to speak, told each joint which area it's responsible for and how much it, the joint, affects it, and all the uh, vertices around it. If you're interested, I will cover it later in more details, but unfortunately not in this video. I'm moving the joints, uh, seeing how it's being deformed, what can be corrected, and so on. 
At some point I noticed that I actually screwed up with the rotation axis of my fingers. I had to remove one hand, redo axis and again mirror the chain on the other side. That's why everything should be tested before binding uh, controllers. Once I'm sure that the joints rotate in the right planes, I can finally proceed uh, to the controllers. Before this you can actually still work on some weights, but in this case I just decided to make controllers first. Uh, controllers are generally created from curves. Yes, you can use uh, standard available curves in Maya, like a circle or square, triangle and so on and so forth. You can draw it by yourself, uh, but you can also use the script, which I actually found on the internet. I'll attach it to this video. You put it into the folder of Maya, into the folder with the scripts, and in the program itself you just type in ek underscore ctrl create. Again, this is not particularly important, you, you can do everything without it, so just for me it's a little time saver. When working with controllers, I do everything in two stages. First, I place all the controllers in places, or more specifically in the pivots of those joints which these controllers should move. And the second one, I directly tie these controllers to the joints. And again, I'd like to point out that uh, it's a very simple rig and uh, there will be no, you know, any sophisticated controllers. Uh, but, you know, there are rigs where literally each joint can be controlled separately or combined with other joints. And uh, this flexibility can create really great deformations and movements. Well, it's not our case here, let's be modest. To bind controllers to bones, we use so-called constraints. There are several types of constraints, I can talk more about it later, but here I will focus on the two uh, main ones that we will use. Point constraint and orient constraint. Orient constraint uh, connects the rotations of one object to the rotations of another one. That is, if we connect the controller to, let's say, the chest joint, it means that we can rotate the controller and this in turn will rotate the joint of the chest. Other transformations like translation and scale will not work. The second type is point constraint. It also works in a similar way. If orient constraint connects rotations, point constraint on the other hand controls the movement or translation of the object. We use point constraint on IK on the hands to tie the controller to them. But notice if we leave it as it is, our controller doesn't let us rotate our guy's wrist. To solve this, we connect the same controller to the wrist joint, applying the orient constraint. And we connect all other controllers to their respective joints in the same way. One maybe catchy part is uh, the elbow controller. When we create our IK, it controls not only our hand, but also the turn of our elbow, for which we need a separate controller. The creation of control object for an elbow is a bit tricky because if we just connect it to the joint, yes, or to the IK in our case, uh, it will switch the position of our elbow to the side, because the rotations of our controller are not correlated with the local elbow rotations. This is actually not particularly critical, but for accuracy this can be solved in a simple way. We create a polygon with three points. We take a point on the elbow, press the W key and choose the component mode. It allows us to move uh, the point not in the world system, but in the direction in which the point itself is uh, directed. And after that we attach our control object to this point. Then we actually delete the polygon. And to connect the control object to the IK, we select it. Then holding the control button, we select IK and then we apply the constraint called pole vector. What it does is, in essence, connects the elbow to our controller and we are good to go. The last thing I'm doing here regarding the creation of controllers is not widely used, but just because I have a simple rig, I decided to do something simple yet efficient. I know that I still need to find a way to control the fingers of our character. For our hand control object, I will create several additional attributes. Particularly, I will create one attribute for each finger. When I do this, uh, what I need to do next is to connect the rotations along the y-axis, this is the axis which bends our fingers, to each corresponding attribute. This is implemented through a connection editor. We select our controller, 
we load it into the column on the left, then uh, select the joints of the desired finger, load it on the right, and then connect the rotations on the left to the rotations uh, along the y-axis on the right. And it's the same for each finger. And this is essentially the whole process of creating a simple rig. Again, it's not advanced, it doesn't have any super sophisticated functions, but if you're just starting out, maybe you could find something useful for yourself. Leave a like, subscribe to our channel and the group in Facebook, and see you in the next video. Have a nice day!